doing all right. The boys coming along with well, everything's well. Yeah, everything's well. Let turn it off. Let it turn that okay. off. I'm sorry, what was that? I was talking to my grandson. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I'm going to leave it in your hand. I'm going to get ready here for for a baptism. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Great. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. My uh, my arm a little so for some reason I know what it is. But I'm mm-hmm. doing all right. I'm making it. All right. Sounds good. Good, good, good. I got something for you uh, before I leave for Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, good. So you know, you already know what it is. Yeah. 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 So you gonna you on this morning? Anybody else on this morning? Um, I know Pastor is on. I haven't heard anyone else. Uh, Doctor Mother Bond and uh, Brother Payson be on. I gotta get back, get back here and and get started this morning. Jordan, pop out downstairs. Huh. I was telling Jordan my dad was downstairs to get him. Oh, okay. He going to church this morning. He's going to church mm-hmm. this morning. Yeah, he is. He's taking mm-hmm. it with him. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, how are you weak? How are you weak, Mr. Howe? It's good. Good. Yeah, good. everything. Good, good. Uh, I'm better than I was. So. Well, this game, yeah. What, you had to test the flu or the flu? No, um, I had tested positive to COVID, but I'm good okay. now. Okay, you like me when I come out, I had eight months the COVID when it come out that time. But it, yeah. it, didn't, never, it didn't never stop me. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I lost my best friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. we lost my brother's, um, bonus son, uh, Thursday night. So, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been tough then. I know that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard to do that. It's hard to do that for the family. But mm-hmm. like I said, anything I can do, always call me and ask me and feel free. Yeah. I don't mind. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Is anyone else on this morning? Mother Barnes, Reverend Face, and y'all on this morning? Yes, sir. I just 
got on. Okay, okay. Most time, you, most time, you, you probably the first or the second one on it during the during the morning. Trying to feed my face this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I know. Pastor said he was um, preparing for um, baptismal um, this morning. Mm-hmm. So, um, is um, is Nancy on? Justin, are you on this morning? She might not be on right now, but she'll probably come on when we get started. Okay. I see it's getting close to time. Um, yeah, I see it because it's ready at 10 o'clock. So, like I said, you digging may ask me about opening up or are you going to open up, whichever. It don't, you can, um, you can go ahead, Deacon Riggs. Okay. Uh, good morning to each and every one that's uh, on the uh, conference call or Facebook uh, this morning. we like to say, uh, we're going to go and get started this morning for our Sunday school lesson this morning. I hope Sister T. Wooten is on this morning. And we're going to ask Mother Bond this morning to lead us on a song this morning and go and face him with the prayer this morning, if you don't mind this morning. Thank the Lord this morning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And at the cross where my Savior and wherefore cleansing from sin I cry, there to my blood, there, there to my heart will the blood of Christ lie. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to Father, we come to you, oh God, on this morning just to tell you thank you. Oh God, we thank you right now for allowing your people to assemble one another, oh God, to to learn your word, oh God, where they can apply it each and every day. Oh God, we ask right now, oh God, that you touch our teacher, oh God. Oh God, that you touch our pastor, oh God. Oh God, that you um, touch each and every one of us, oh God. Oh God, just give us the um, spirit of understanding, oh God, the knowledge, oh God. Continue to strengthen each and every one of your people, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We ask that you um, continue to touch us, oh God. Teach us what to pray for and how to pray. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Amen, amen. This morning. Thank you, Mr. Howard, this morning for the love of the prayer this morning. Now we have turned it over to Trustee Wooden this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning back to you, Trustee Wooden. 
a lesson for the day is from the book of Ephesians, chapter mm-hmm. 1, verse 15 through 23. And the subject is wisdom and the enlightenment of soul. Mm-hmm. Now, um, in our world today, we have access to so much information. We got the TV show, the friends, family, group, and we got the internet website and so forth. But, <clears throat> But we have to discern which ones are right for us, which one's going to give us the wisdom we need. And the believers have to learn which ones can provide hope and wisdom. And God is our source of hope and wisdom. And as Paul continued talking with the church in Ephesus, he said, and you know, say, that's why ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus, and of the love you have for Christian everywhere, that I never stop thanking God for you. He said, I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask him to give you wisdom to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. And Paul continued to say, I pray for your heart. I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can see the see something of the future he has called you to share. And he says, so I want you to realize that God has been made rich because we who are Christ have been given to him. He says, I pray that you will begin to understand how great his power to help you to help those who believe in him. So it is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated, and, and seated him in heaven in the place of honor at God's right hand in heaven. He said, now, say, you know, far, way above any other king. Say, he's above anybody. There's nobody that can, can even uh, compete with him. He's way above any king, any ruler, or any leader. His honor is far more glorious than that of anyone else in the world or in the world to come. And God has put, he said, God has put all things under his feet and made him the head of the church. He is in charge of it. All He is in charge of it all and has the final word on everything. And Paul told us that the church is Christ's body, in which he speaks and acts by which he feels everything with his word. He is the author and the giver of everything, everywhere. And as we look at this lesson, we look at some of the things in this lesson. Um, it, Paul talks about the word enlightenment to furnish, and, and it means to furnish knowledge, to instruct. To give spiritual insight to. So our lesson today is today that uh, wisdom allows heavenly knowledge in through the surrender heart. Well, you know, people without wisdom, you just never know what they might say. Sometimes, you know, we say, you hear people say, well, you know, I don't bite my tongue. I, if it comes up, it comes out. Well, if you're a believer in God, and if you got any wisdom, some things you won't say. Yes, and t- sometimes people say, "No, nah, I, I just tell them off. I don't bite my tongue." Well, sometimes it might not be a bad right. idea if you did bite your tongue, because while it's hurting, you would be talking. And we need to, as believers in Christ, there's some things we just got to sharpen up and cut off, and and and, and we got to, we got to judge things. We got to live. And we got to know the wisdom of God. Because if we got God's wisdom, there's some things we won't say. And then, too, if we say something, we have to be careful how we say it. Because sometimes we can cause people to leave the church, which is the body of Christ. And, you know, we say that, you know, they don't come anymore. But you don't know why. You don't know what's going on. Sometimes you hurt the feelings. By just saying what's on your mind. Some people say if it comes up, it comes out. Well, it shouldn't be in you. Some things, after you've been on this Christian journey, ought not be in you anyway. Mm-hmm. 
And we have to, we have to remember, you know, uh, James tells us, uh, 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 you know, that you need wisdom, ask for it, ask God for it. And, and see, the wisdom we so desperately need and is that it is only a prayer way. Sometimes you got to get alone, you got to sit by yourself and ask, well, God, give me wisdom about this situation. When I speak, let me speak with wisdom. Not just speaking because I feel like even if I know I'm right, if I know I'm right and, and everybody else thinks I'm wrong or whatever it is, but I still need wisdom to handle this situation. And, and if you got a surrender heart, then you got wisdom in the heart. And so, you know, you need to, we need to think about how God has, <clears throat> has blessed us. And when we think about real believers of God, Okay, so therefore, we need to be careful how we treat each other. You see, this is one of the things that Paul was so excited about. He says that they had love and compassion for one another. They looked out for one another. And Paul was so happy about that. And that's, that is the way God wants us to be. Look out for each other, have passion for each other. And let people know that when they come to the house of God, they will find peace. They will find help. And they will find love. And that was one thing that Paul was so excited about. And he said, <coughs> and Paul said, he talked about praise. First thing he did, he praised the works, the faith, and the love that he heard about the Ephesian church. And, and he said, you know, it seems like Paul had a relationship with that church and it seems like he had a special relationship with members of that community. It seemed like Paul just kept tabs on the community that he had found. This was one of the churches that Paul had found and he was so proud of it. <clears throat> this was apparently one of his favorite, his favorite church. He had found this other churches but this was the one that he just kind of zeroed in on, and he was very, very happy with what they had done, their faith, he said. And, you know, as believers, we, we got to live out our faith so that people hear of, hear of our faith, and they began to spread the good news of our work. They said, well, you know, that church over there is prospering. <clears throat> they are doing this, and they are doing that. And look at the look at the people's practices, and, and how, wouldn't that be great if people could say that about a lot of our church, and in particular our church, to say the church is prosper. Look at the members, not so much in numbers, but in spirit. If we have the spirit of Christ in us, we are already prosper because we're doing what God has called us to do. And we want to make sure that when we have, that the members are already in our church, that we are getting along, we are looking out for each other, we have compassion for each other, we are sharing the word of God, we are, we are prosperous. It doesn't matter whether you get five members in or whether you get ten in, but the main thing is not the quantity, it's the quality of the service that you give and as, as believers in God, and especially the leaders of the church, we're supposed to be looking out for each other. When, when one hurt, we all hurt. When one rejoice, we all rejoice. And this is one of the things that Paul was so happy about with the, with the church at Ephesus. He says, I am so happy. Every time I hear about y'all, I just get so much happy, and I pray that things will Continue to get more better and better. And he said, and he used that church. He said, that's such a model church. It's a model church. And he was using that as an example. He said, we should always, <clears throat> well, this is the way we should live, he said. And this is why I'm so proud of you. So look what you've done. Look how you're living. So I am grateful. I am so grateful every time I think about you. I just prayed. And Paul did a lot of interceding for the church. He says, I just pray for you, and I pray that God will give you more wisdom, 
that God will open up your mind, your heart to receive the things that you need as a believer because you need these things to carry on. And then he told him, he said, you know, he said, he, I talked to God on your behalf. He said, I pray that God will grant the spirit and wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God so that they may be in light and know God better. Paul wanted them to keep going. And he said, you're doing good, and I'm happy for you. He said, but I, I want you to be better and better. And this is what we strive to do. We strive to be better and better and do whatever it is that we need to do. See, the first thing we have to do is, like I said, ask God for wisdom. Because if you don't have wisdom, you know, you may go in any direction and you think you're right. And sometimes you can be right, but a little bit of wisdom will calm things down. Wisdom will keep us from out of argument. Wisdom will make us have compassion for people. Wisdom will make us say where we would normally judge a person. Wisdom says, don't judge, just listen and see what's going on. Wisdom will cause us to, to, he will call the program of God to go smooth. Wisdom will make us to the point where we don't want to argue. We don't, we'll say, we'll give up the right for the wrong if necessary. We say, no, Lord, how do you want me to handle it? Wisdom will make you come home and, and sit down and ask God and get on your knees and say, Lord, how do you want me to handle it? I know I'm right, but if, if I, we don't, we can't come to an agreement, how do we handle that? Wisdom will consult God first, but if you don't have the wisdom, you'll come out there bullying. You'll come out there, you might say anything. And you tap the church of God. It is not your way, not necessarily. And even if your way is right. But God wants us to ask him for wisdom so that we can say, okay, Lord, now, Lord, I see what you think. You told me to hold my peace because the battle was not even mine. It was yours. I thank you, Lord, that you have taken care of everything. And these are the things that Paul was talking to the Ephesians about. He said, oh, y'all just, just have really done well. The love you have for each other. And that's another thing. If we got wisdom, you know, we're going to have love for each other. We're going to pray for each other. We're going to see whatever we can do for each other. And that means from the head of the church on down until the, the little one in the church. We're going we're gonna to look out for them. And we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray with them if they need to. But we have to remember that, that it is God who gives us wisdom. And, and that's why you can't, uh, you can't just go even on your own feelings. No, you, your feelings is one thing, but you have to have wisdom. And just like when you get up in the morning, you choose to serve the Lord. You choose to say, Thank you, Lord, for another day. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice in gladness. Regardless of whatever happens, I'm still going to rejoice and be glad in it. It's a decision you make. And when you got wisdom, if you don't have it, when you study your word, when you, when you, uh, you learn how to treat people, you start the wrong wisdom, and you say, you know, wisdom tells me I need to do this. Wisdom tell me I need to do that. So Paul wanted them, Paul also, you know, he wanted them to have a growing knowledge of God so they would know God's will and God's purpose. And he also wanted them to have correct knowledge of God because there would be false prophets in the land. And they needed to understand the difference between false teaching and the actual teaching of God. Now, false teaching, <clears throat> false prophets are also a problem today. They come in different shapes, different sizes, and different colors. Mm -hmm. But we must tarry in the spirit for the gift of discernment. And, you know, it's up to the believer to determine what he or she is dealing with at that moment. And if you don't know the word, 
you haven't studied the word, you don't know the word, then, you know, you may follow anybody. That contributes to how we have so many cults in the land. This person said, we're going to follow this one. This one come up, they'll tell you just enough that you say, yeah, uh uh-huh, that's in the Bible. But have you read the whole verse? Have you read it before? And have you read it after? So you'll know what it says. Usually they pick out one or two verses and, and that, and they'll preach on that, they'll teach you that. And, and yet, you know, nobody has really discussed the whole thing. It's just that they pick out part that they think sounds good and will draw you in. But see, if you don't have that sound teaching, you may be drawn in. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, <clears throat> To discern this, we must know sound teaching for ourselves. You know, it's hard if you know the word. It is hard for someone to fool you because you say, now, uh -uh, uh-uh, that's not what the Bible says. I know better than that. And you you may come home if you hear somebody preaching and it sounds like they're all key or even speaking or whatever. You say, you come home, you say, I'm going to get that, get down where they are. If they coming from John or, or Peter or First Peter or something. I write that down. When I get home, I'm going to read it because that don't quite sit right in me. Let, let me just look and see. I want to see for myself. So you know what I'm talking about? They can't pull the wool over your eyes because you know the word. When you know the word, you know that you know the word, nobody can trip you up. And that's what one of the things Paul wanted the Ephesian to know because he said, they will, uh, <clears throat> these false prophets would come in the land and they would trip them up. And he was so happy that even though the uh, church of Ephesus was in an area where they did a lot of um, false pagan worship, Paul was so happy. He told them how happy he was that, that they, some of them just kept it on, they kept the faith. They didn't fall for that. They didn't worship the Isle of God. They kept up. And they worship the real God. And he was so happy that someone was able to push their way through, to keep up with it, to make sure that they stay on course with the living God and not just these false gods. Uh, in Ephesus, they had the god Artemis, and then they had, and the Romans worship it as Diana. So they had people. <clears throat> they had these gods. But Paul was so happy, he told the vision that there a small group of them withstood it all. They didn't bow down to the idols. They kept worshiping the living God. And he was so happy about that. And then he told them about the power of God. He said, God raised Jesus from the dead. He said, gave him, gave him a heavenly throne and elevated him above every power and place. God's power is excellent for those who believe and put their trust in him. And you see, we have, we have the power in God to do what we need to do. But so many times we get off course. Sometimes we don't mean to. Sometimes we just have a weak time. We are going through so much that we have some weak moments and, and we could easily be tripped up. But the good thing about it, those, the believers who know the word, even if you get off course, you can say, no, Lord, I, I'm off course. I, I, I need to get back. I need to get back or help me to get back. You know who to call because you know who you worship. You know who has the power to help you get back where you need to get. And so that's the good thing about knowing about God. The living God, not these idol of God they worship. They worship the gods that these people worship. They can't do anything for them. They can't move or do anything. Sometimes it's a stash. It's a piece of wood, a piece of iron, a piece of bronze. So, but we're talking about the living God, the one who can move mountains, the one who can lift us up when we're down. And that's why we need to know all we can know about him. And, and and that way, when we need help, we call on the living God, the God who got the 
power, who can do things, who will do things if we believe and trust in him. And Paul was telling the Ephesians, he said, I'm just so happy about y'all. I don't know what to do. You just, I pray for you every time I think about you. I, I just get happy to know that that little group, that remnant held on and is still holding on. And now the church is first because of the love y'all have for the saints everywhere. And, and you look out for the people in this church. You, you, you have compassion. If one hurt, all hurt. If one happy, all happy. So I, I'm just really excited about that. And he said, Paul told him, said, you know, God's power it is not only great for the believer, but it is great in the believer. I said, along with the great power come great responsibility now. He said, now, you believers are responsible for using the power on God's mission field. God gives you this power that you can use, but he wants you to use it to his glory. And, and you know, the church, if the church could realize how the power that the believers have and then operate accordingly, just think how powerful the church could be. The church has power, <clears throat> the, uh, the power of God. And God is over the church and he's giving the church power. But if we realize just how much power we as believers have and then we operate accordingly, oh, just think how that would be. And Paul told him, he said, you know, I was happy about the progress of the church and, uh, and used it as a model church. In other words, as an example for others, you know, he prayed, he prayed the church. He prayed for them and reminded them of God's great power. He said, now, you don't have to, when you got the power of God, you can move mountains, but you got to have, you got to know God, you got to study his word, you got to pray, you got to fast. And he said, and Paul says, one of the new things that I really love about you, Fish, y'all interceded for each other, just like Paul interceded for the church. He interceded for the church, and uh, every time he would think about it, and he said, the, the state of the church interceded for each other. And that's the good thing. We all can stand to have somebody to pray for us, even if they're not there with us, to pray with us physically, but to intercede for us. That is a great thing because we all need that. And Paul says, uh, uh, they interceded for each other. They are looking out for each other. They love each other. And he said, when I love that church, I am so happy. I'm so excited. I want them to grow more and more and be a model church. Be an example to all the churches around in the community. And let them see how the, the hearts of God will grow if we get in line and step to how we ought to be. And that's where wisdom come in. And wisdom says, you know, now let us, whatever is best for the community, let us do it. Not what is best for me. Not necessarily what I personally want. No. What is great for the house of God. And God says, you know, if we, if we live according to how God wants us, God is going to bless us. God is going, we're going to expand. And people all over will be talking about the church like they're doing here in, the, in Ephesus. They're talking about the church. And, you know, and, and when we know, when we, when we know what God has done for us and is still doing for us, you know, we can have confidence in our future. And confidence in the future, that frees us up as believers to live fully in the present. We give it, we, we got it together with the Lord. And so all we need to do now is just live and work until he calls us home. So one day, working day will be all over. There will be no, mother, no other time to work. There will be no other work to be done on this side. Because one day we're going to cross over. And, and all the things that are done here is done. There won't be any changes. We, we're going to cross over. And, and God is going to call us home. 
So what we need to do is to make sure, and, and in all you're getting, as the Bible said, get wisdom. If we have wisdom, there's so many things we won't stay or do. And it seems like wisdom is the one, is, is a key that could really hold us all together. We, we have to think about, no, uh-uh, that, that's not, that's not what I want to say. Lord, what I want to do, is that what you want to do? Wisdom will check out these things, a little wisdom. Sometimes you hear people talk, or they, they're just not using a bit of wisdom. Uh, wisdom will keep us free. Wisdom will have us to, to love people that we don't even like. So we need to, we need to think about this. And, and, and you know, and Paul was so happy with the, the Ephesian church. And he says, oh, I know he had started, he had, he had found the other churches, but it seemed like this must have been his heart. He kept tabs on that church and he, he wrote them letters. He kept trying to keep them in authority. He says, now I want you to, you know, I want you to grow more and love it. And, and then you be a model for all these other churches to look at you and they will see how you grow. They will want to grow also. So, so, you know, there's a lot of power in it and the, uh, the believers need to tap into the, uh, the, the unlimited power that is available for us. And, you know, and we need to remember that all we need is in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. He has everything that we need, from wisdom to everything else. He provides all that we need. Are there any comments? Uh, Trustee, when you say that, you know, wisdom, you know, as you said a moment ago, we, we, we got wisdom, but you got to know how to use it and when to use it. Because wisdom is a, like you said, is a powerful word if you look at it in more than one way. Uh-huh. Because that's, that's what God put in us, to have the wisdom to do things that other people can't do. Then we got to have the wisdom to help them to get across that, to get across to where we are. Uh-huh. And then sometimes, Sis Nancy, we will say we educated, we've been to college and all that, and we got with them, but they don't know they don't have nothing because they don't know how to treat people, they don't know how to talk to people, and they just don't know how to do. They just, they know how to, but they just don't want to do right. Yes, because they have not sold out to God. That's and right. On page 42 of our lesson, down the bottom, it says, think about it. It says, what is the difference between wisdom and intelligence? While both deal in knowledge, intelligence receives and interpret it through the filter of the mind, while wisdom allows heavenly knowledge in through a surrender heart. Amen. Amen. It doesn't make any difference uh, <clears throat> how smart you think you are or educated or uh, financially secure or what, but wisdom. Wisdom is what you need to keep going. That's right. Wisdom would cause you to get stuff that you ordinarily would not get because you, right. know, you, you study the word, you know what God's words say, so you use your wisdom to, to get what you need to get. That's right. A lot of things <clears throat> that you some people could have if they had a little wisdom. Yes, sir. That's right. So that's that's what take we have to study. And, and James said, "Anyone like wisdom, let him ask of the Lord." Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we have to ask the Lord every day. Lord, please give us wisdom and, and, and stay in, in the Word. As much as we can, and, and nobody got time to sit down all day and read for eight hours. Not, but the thing about it is, what you do read, take it in and study. That's right. And, and use it. That's because right. 
Because sometimes some stuff come out, some people mind ought not be coming out. Now you tell me you've been on this journey for for so many years, you ain't got no business talking like that. That's right. That's right. And then some some people say they've been in the church all along and say you say you won't have, but what have you done since you've been there? That's right. That that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And Trustee Wooten, um, one of the things um, that we're looking at today that I saw too, and which you just read, is that if you got wisdom, you got to know that you got to apply it to your own heart. That's our title for today, Wisdom as an, enlight- as an Enlightenment of Heart. So it's, it's not a matter of, you know, what a person um, think they are or what an educational status a person has or what other financial position a person has or any other status that they have. It's, it's what's in their heart. And the thing is, we got to have enough uh, understanding and we got to have enough wisdom to know that it doesn't matter, you know, what we believe because we can't judge nobody. Like they say, we ain't got no heaven or hell to put nobody in it. But um, we got to work for ourselves to make sure that we have what God would deem appropriate and right. Over here on page 43, it says that um, that the apostles desired that his readers have a spiritual disposition by which they would be able to comprehend the concepts of divine truth. And then you got to apply it practically. So that means you, it says you got to apply it practically. It doesn't say the other folks got to apply it practically. It says you have to apply that wisdom that you don't praise for and that God done gave you. You got to apply that practically. And then when you flip over on page 44, it says it's one thing to know the right or best choices to make, but it is another thing to have the ability to apply it for the best outcome. So a lot of times people, you know, uh, um, might think that they have wisdom, they might think that they have understanding, they might think that they have knowledge about any topic or certain things, but it, the thing is, is do you apply it so it's got the best outcome? And you talked about that in your lesson today in the application of wisdom, you know, um, if you're Christian and, and, and you're professing Christianity and, and you're saying God can change your heart and, and you're saved and all this other stuff, then why would you um, do this or do that to hurt, to hurt your uh, to hurt your fellow fellow member or fellow Christians and stuff? So you know that's the thing on page forty four is it that it is another thing to have the ability to apply it for the best outcome. And then um, the last thing I wanted to say is that um, on page 46, it says down that last paragraph, it is important to note that Christ is over the entire church. And, and you know, we might be divided up in all kind of um, denominations and sects and, and ministries and groups and, you know, this one and that one, but the church as a whole represents the body of Christ. And we need to always remember this and whatever we, you know, whatever we do. And um, remember that Christ is above all things. And that's where we go to page 47 under live it, cheer it, and share it. Christ is above all things. Unfortunately, we do not always live as if Jesus is death in the grave. And it states to us, as you go about your week, month, and year, Make the commitment to live as if Christ is at the right hand of God and is Lord of the church. Well, you see, all of this come about, first thing you have to do is come to Christ yourself. You have to come to Christ, and then you have to you have to study the word, because you're going to live off what God is doing in your life, not what he's doing in someone else's life. And that's why it's so important that you get a hold of things and you study the word for yourself. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, you know, Tiff Nancy, I have a comment, um, and I was just listening to everything, but my comment would be, well, what what's in your heart is what you're displaying, what's coming out. So you yeah. can't hide that, and nobody's judging nobody. It's what, what you display, what's in your heart is is what's coming out. And, you know, the Bible, Bible shows us how we're supposed to be, what's supposed to be in our heart. But like you said last Sunday, and I said this myself, I'm a sinner, but I have a future. So yeah. what's in my heart is what I'm going to display. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and see, th- that is you, you know, if it's in you, you th- and that's what you got in you, that's why you're going to act. That's right. And see, it, it's coming up from the heart. And, and mm-hmm. if you got love in your heart, you're going to display love when you see people. But if you got a hatred in your heart, you're going to always have a frown and you're going to be all, all hard-hearted and all that kind of stuff. It's what's in your heart is coming out. That's so when right. someone say what's in there, if it comes up and come out, that means it was not, you know, what that was what was in your heart. That's right. That's right. And I thank God for you this morning, Sister Nancy, and I thank you for studying that word because everything you said was right on point. You do an awesome job, and I just thank God for it. I, I thank you, and I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. And I we studied, as we study together, we are all are learning. Amen. I, Amen. I enjoy every minute of it. Thank you. Are there any other- yeah, you did do a wonderful job. And there was a whole lot of information in this lesson. Um, yes. that we want a whole lot of uh, good points that, you know, that we needed to take. And apply mm-hmm. it to our lives. Uh, you know, you can't just take one thing, but it was a lot. And, you mm-hmm. know, we need to realize that you talked about earlier in this lesson about, you know, um, during this time, uh, during this period of time, um, that there was a lot in, in Paul's time in Asia Line, there was a lot of bad spirits and stuff around. And you were saying that, um, you know, it was easy for the people back then to be misled by those uh, those people that was worshiping other gods and, and, you know, realizing that it was bad. And it's still some bad spirits today, you know. But uh, our lesson today tells us, um, you know, Paul was praying for us. And, and I think you said that our leaders got to pray for us. And mm-hmm. we got to pray for ourselves and we got to pray for each other. And, and that's what it's saying in our in our lesson today, that if we put up an intercession prayer for each other, it would deepen our awareness of God's love that he has invested in us. And not only is we going to get an inheritance if we believe and serve God and, and work according to his word and act and live according to his word, but his inheritance is now gives us power to overcome all and everything that, you know, should come against us, and also after we die, we will get a home with him in glory. Uh, are there any other comments? Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Brother Nancy. I just want to say um, enjoy the message as usual, and I am also um, recording live uh, from my iPad. Um, it's just the audio. Um, I'm glad I did because this is a powerful message and got about eight people online, um, ever who is, um, uh, keeping the minutes. I got about eight people online, um, listening to the audio, but, uh, wisdom, uh, that's one of my, um, pet peeves, uh, uh, over the years, I've always hung around older people. Um, and, and, and also, uh, y'all know one of my pet peeves too is, uh, being true to yourself before you can be true to mm-hmm. others. And, and, you know, listen to this message. I know we, we say things, um, um, all the time that we have said back in the day and it sounded good then and, and, and it sounds good now to some folk. You know, for instance, as, um, we say we don't have a hell, or hell to put folk here, but, you know, we can say it all day, but people do it. It's not a reality. People do it. And, and, and we gotta understand that when we do things that affect other folk, 
you know, you know, it, it, it doesn't look good. And if you're doing things that, that hurt yourself, that's fine. But the problem I have with folk is when you do things uh, and, it, and, and, and it affect me, then that's the problem. But again, wisdom, uh, um, um, that's what I, now, now speaking for myself, that's what I say I have because I have hung around elder people. I don't read the Bible as I should, uh, but I look forward to uh, uh, listening to, um, uh, well, uh, 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 joining in on Sunday school. Again, like I said, I don't read the Bible like I ought to, but, but I get it. And, 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 and a lot of times, uh, uh, folk like myself that's slow, I don't get it, but I get it when I hear other folk. And then when we have these type of discussion, I say, um, uh, Anderson Chapel had the best Bible study in, in, in the entire world. Like, uh, our pastor used to say about the sheriff, uh, 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 Reverend Cherry, uh, uh, the Reverend, um, uh, that Dick and Knight was the um, sheriff of the entire world, but um, I, I say uh, our Bible study, Sunday school, uh, especially Sunday school, is, is, is a powerful, and I look forward to it. Like I said, I was going to um, give you an audio, had, had ordered it, but um, I decided to do it this way, where I can put it right online, live as we're doing it, and I don't think nobody, I get new people coming on every week, I think you're doing a wonderful job, you are uh, giving us that wisdom, uh, I hear folk and I don't hear folk. Some folk I hear and I hear them from Sunday to Sunday and you are that one. I look forward to what you're doing. You're doing a great thing for me. I can't speak for anybody else, but it keeps me going during the week. I look forward to it and I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Brother Dancy. Thank you so much for the for the inspiration and the uplifting. It causes me to want to do better and better and better. Are there any other comments? If there are not, this concludes our Sunday school lesson. Thank you, Trustee Wooden, for the Sunday school list that you had given us this morning. I hope all our hearts are Got some out of the Sunday school lesson this morning. Uh, Reverend Lewis, how many are online this morning? Yeah, 15 online. Okay. All right. We are going to go back and just ask somebody uh, to uh, come in on what had been, what they had learned this morning from the list. Anyone? I know everybody has spoke on this lesson this morning. Yes, in our application and in review, um, on page 47, where they say, remember it, it says, um, Paul lists wisdom as a requirement to enhance one's appreciation of God's power working in the hearts of believers. When we internalize this power as part of our, what sustains our faith, and like wisdom, its purpose is made to be more practical in our lives. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Mother Johnson, this morning for that. Uh, now we'll go to our secretary this morning. Okay. Pastor Lewis, is anyone in the sanctuary? I think we have a total of 12 in the sense where. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Sunday school um, for Anderson Chapel and St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church, the 13th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2022. Sunday school will call to order by Deacon Rick at 10 o'clock a.m. The opening hymn was sung by Mother Barnes, Glory to His Name, prayer by Minister Howard. Um, Trustee Wood and Review. I'm sorry. Now, um, topic, um, of the lesson was wisdom as enlightened, enlightened of, of heart. The, um, back, the scripture came from Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. The key verse is Ephesians 1, 18. The lesson was reviewed for 42 minutes by Trustee Wood. Mother Johnson made the closing marks for Sunday school. Um, 35 total in attendance. Um, all your officers remain the same. Thank, 
Thank you, uh, Minister Howe, for reading our minutes this morning. Are there any correction this morning in the minutes? If not, we will receive the minute as been read this morning. And I know we're going into another service, but service right after this. So we're just going to pause and say amen this morning. Amen. 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 Am